Hey there. So I got a quick question for you. Is this you? Because whoever it is I'm going to be talking to today, there's this sort of like ask or frustration. This it's almost like a, a blockage. Like, first of all, what, what's the question that I need to ask? But how can I find sensible, deep, connected relationships that resonate with my soul? And after I go to cut, I do have the awakening. I get the sense that you're starting to put yourself into a position where you can start feeling a little bit experimental, whether that is um, experimenting and understanding your sacred sexuality. But I also think that you're looking for people that can resonate with your sexuality. We do have the high priest right here. Um, I get the sense that in the past, you've had a very generous personality and putting yourself into a position where you can be kind, loving, nurturing, but it's annoying to you because you felt as though if you offered this, you could call it worship if you want, but like offering this, this love and this joy, it's as though you haven't been getting the reciprocity that you desire because this is a 10 of swords. I've been getting a lot of split asset energy, but I think for your reading today, this is sort of a, a split minds where one person told you what it what it looks like to be, say, in a relationship, romantic, platonic, whatever else, but you are starting to have your, your own ideas. And with the magician right here, it sounds like you're ready to try something brand new. You're a little bit nervous because you've never done this solo before, but Whoever's message this is going to be for today, this is about you untethering from other people's expectations in love and your spiritual journey. So if this sounds like your story, you're more than welcome to stick around. Welcome to your Is This You reading where we are spiritual as fuck. If we haven't met yet, my name is High Priestess Barry, psychic medium and divine channel. We're hoping to bring you a message. Now, always remember, listen to your instincts, tap into your intuition. If there's anything that I talk about that doesn't make any sense, totally fine. Do not worry about it. This message may not be for you, but you are always welcome to go to the description below and submit your own request for an anonymously channeled message. So um, before I go to cut, uh, I decided to bring out the threads of fate and the romance angels there's definitely this kind of balance that you're you're seeking out when it comes to understanding self-love when it comes to loving others a little bit of your sexuality is definitely a part of it there's a reason why i was inspired to grab the erotic tarot but this is um almost new territory and diving into things that may have been considered to be, you know, sacrosanct in the past. And it's one of those things where I pushed it away for so long. So why not give it a try anyways? Will I be okay? And the moment I said that I got this really hot flush of energy um, coursing through my body, because at the base of the deck, I do have the card of trust. Can I trust myself? Can I trust my instincts? Can I trust the magnetism that I feel towards people. What is this magnetism? Because I do also have, a, with the clarifier, this could be the one. And a lot of us can get very obsessed with the one, whether if it's we're trying to find a life partner or we're way into the matrix, you know, pick a lane. But there is um, a disconnect from your intuition that it's pretty common, I, I hate to say, where sometimes we get so obsessed looking for the person as like, you know, the one and only, and we never actually took into consideration that I am the person that I've been looking for. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut these cards um, and we're gonna be asking, um, what is the primary challenge that you are faced with in these energies? What kind of solution does, or pardon me, well, that's interesting. So we're mixing this up right now, because normally I would say, huh, 
Well, we're going to be kind of working around with this in a weird way because what is your primary blockage? Because it sounds like your primary blockage is actually a hint to your solution. And then we'll get the final potential outcome. But after I go to cut, I have the card of compassion. Compassion for yourself. And also, if you're coming out of an experimentation, maybe you have been trying taboo things, maybe you have been going out and, um, you know, experimenting with different people, different scenes, trying to see what resonates with you the most, there is a piece of you that I think has felt a little bit bad about, I'm hearing walking away from the faith. Now, this doesn't mean that you had to be part of a religion, but this could also just be um, a belief system that you always, you know, you sort of made your identity about it. It's like, no, one day I'm always gonna be like this. And in some ways going against the version of yourself that you proclaimed to be when you were younger, it's almost like oppositional defiance disorder, except you decided to defy yourself. And there's going to be a huge call for having this self-compassion towards yourself. You went out and you experimented, you've gone out and you've been trying to understand what it is you've been looking for. This could be through sex. This could be through your healthcare journey. This could be through um, a career choice. Like there's so many different ways this could play out. I do say though, it seems like after all of this, the conclusion that you are coming to and can be is that you are safe to love. And I am going to be bringing in the tarot um, as well, just to kind of tune into your energies. And before I go to cut, I do want to note this Ace of Pentacles. This is a solid new beginning, but with this Ace of Wands, this supercharges a change that's happening in your life. And I will note, I just see the one, and this is learning how to feel comfortable being so low. Even if you are with the one, again, if you are a Matrix fan or you're looking for the life partner, the, the one needs to be me, not the other. And after I go to cut Five of Pentacles, what's beneath the Five of Pentacles? Oh, I got a... I'm, I'm hearing the word misgiving because we do have the card of temperance and angelic energy is supposed to trigger you. People think that, oh, angels, fluffy, nothing ever bad ever has to happen to me. Let's think happy thoughts. First of all, it's one thing to think happy thoughts. It's another to be positive. And positivity is only about flow to make sure that you're always moving forward, that you don't find yourself stuck and stagnant. And it's difficult because you might feel as though you're stuck and stagnant. You're closing a chapter out of your life and the immediate results haven't felt comforting. But in today's main message, which I do recommend checking out because there's definitely some bleed over because that's talking about a huge shift that you can start looking forward to in your relationships. But this is also a card of boredom. Uh, you know, you know, when you're so immobile and you start freezing that you just need to get up and walk around in order to warm up. And that's a little bit of this hot, cool energy from our angel over here. So what the fuck is your primary challenge right now in these energies? Finances and career with a withdrawal. Um, uh, it's not, it's one thing to feel like you have lack self worth within your soul, but it's another to feel as though maybe you don't have worth within your finances. Um, whatever experiment that you've been in, you've tried working on the physical and the things that are tangible and the stuff that is provable because there's, Again, I keep hearing the word experiment. You've been trying to figure something out in the deep recesses of your mind to understand why do people behave this way? Like, are they actually happy? And <laughs> I'm hearing you're off that. No, no, they aren't happy berries. That's part of the problem right now. Um, with the, okay, there we go. Five of swords. Um, this is definitely that temporary setback energy. And if you've had to make new choices in your life, maybe you've had to do a major career change. This also can be um, moving away and having to take financial considerations into moving or, you know, in my case, going through, say, a divorce where there are a lot of finances, like especially in my case, you know, I had to pay out like a little bit of alimony and I had to um, deal with my own debts. But then there's also how do you rebuild when you go out on your own, when you've been cohabitating or codependent on another person for such an extended period of time? There is a shift going on within your finances 
and this is actually part of your spiritual growth because whenever you have entangling your um your loving energies into your passionate energies they have been used and abused and i get a sense that you have been accidentally indebted yourself so what is the primary blockage going on right now oh wow okay so this is the void this is that void energy i was talking about in the main reading boredom how do you if you're someone who's like you know i'm tapping my fingers quite rapidly I'm like, there's this finicky energy and fussy energy and again i'm getting this like like this like you know probably chances are you're in a very hot climate right now as well just there's a piece of you just like i just need to keep cool about this i just i need to stay cool um and i think you're having a difficult time sitting through some boredom sitting through some stagnancy I did mention the void, which is this energy right here. Like when you've gotten rid of energies that are frustrating you, frustration is heat and you've been actively trying to remove habits, um, toxic elements, relationship dynamics, old ideologies. Y you have been siphoning through them, but when you get rid of a bunch of stuff that you're so accustomed to doing, like that's when the boredom kicks in. And if we have any kind of trauma due to boredom, like, you know, sitting around, like, you know, sucking our thumbs as kids and the parents saying, get off your ass and do something. It, it's finally giving ourselves permission to rest because if you are truly a master manifester and I actually think that you are, it's important for you to feel comfortable with doing nothing especially if you're someone who is very proactive and helping others, imposing yourself onto others because you saw that people were hurting, you felt like you could help them, support them, kind of give them almost like a leg brace for a period of time while they allowed the core wound to heal. But instead of both of you turning into like mutual partnership or a mutual situation, they never really learned how to walk on their own. They became dependent upon you, the emperor. Oh, wow. Like, again, this comes back to this card of compassion that I saw at the base over here. And you may have fought tooth and nail for this lifestyle. You may have thought tooth and nail to create a sense of an appearance as though, yeah, you are hardworking. Yeah, you can get things done. Like the emperor is Aries, fire energy. We're also in this Aries North node, like rebuilding our foundation from the ground up and being able to create an environment that supports our idea of healthy relationships, our idea of being around people who are healthfully spiritual, being okay with your own autonomous way of approaching your spirituality and in some ways learning how to harmonize with others but because of some i'm because of the family issues the you know whether it's the parent that said you know you need to work harder to get better grades or stop sitting around and doing nothing or you know it's like that song's like get a haircut and get a real job um never feeling as though we were supported by our family because we weren't allowed to rest, not in the classic sense. And as you are, oh wow, my emperor tried to <laughs> get away subconsciously, you have been working on your own foundation and it's only confusing right now because you haven't been able to see the fruits of your labor in your 3D reality. Because that's sort of how I picked it up with the challenge card over here. So what is the solution that spirit recommends at this time? Whoa, I'm actually having a difficult time grabbing your cards. Um, you know, I go to grab them, then something shifts and, I, and then I, I retract. So there's something going on within your energy where um, it's still overcoming some post-traumatic stress disorder. And you may be someone who's like, I've never been to the war. I never had anything bad happen to me. And maybe you're right. And you know, good. <laughs> but there's another half of PTSD that sometimes if it's minor, we don't listen to it because we don't think it's a major thing that requires heavy psychological workup. But if you're aiming towards something, it's like there's this kind of shutter in there, pay attention to it. Your lizard brain is trying to communicate something with you. And that is where an old um, wound that you haven't had a chance to 
feel before, which I'm now I'm a little bit nervous what these cards are going to say. There's an energy you've never been able to feel before because the only way you can feel it is if you are in the void and not avoiding important energies. Oh, what's that? What's that going to be? Past life relationship and boundaries. If you are someone who's been stuck in a repeated cycle or you can't get someone out of your energy, it's as though um, you've always known this person. They feel so fucking familiar. They may even feel exactly like family, even if they're not necessarily blood related to you. Like you're actually um, getting over a trauma bonded relationship and I suspect you might still be in the middle of it knowingly or unknowingly trying to find a way out of it and because i'm hearing find a way out find a way out find a way out this is actually part of the challenge is um we sometimes get caught up in the romantic notion as to what a soulmate is supposed to be soulmates we're supposed to be forever and ever 1555 on the clock but soulmates are nothing more than past life relationships people that you know we've either learned something together or we still need to learn something together it doesn't have anything to do with love or sex it has everything to do with finding clues in our spiritual journey to give us a chance to grow thrive discover ourselves for who we are and we make this mistake with our karmic past life relationships that they are the key to who we actually are they have been lost just like you you both have been experimenting but both of you didn't realize you weren't on the same page both of you had completely different hypotheses on what it is you're trying to get out of it and there's a reason why both of you have never been able to reach the same conclusion but in the tarot three of swords this did come up in our uh, main reading today and there's a simple lesson here for you. Put up boundaries. Just because someone says or you feel like they have a past life connection to you, it doesn't mean you need to give in to every single romantic gesture. You know, I, this guy's kind of creeping me out. Like he's just coming around it's like, hi, I met you at a bar and I feel like we're soulmates and just started like, you know, cupping this gal without even talking. And she's not really that into it, but because of this lack of inner authority that you may have given to others you're like well okay i guess some we should be together it's a lot of like i guess we could well i, I suppose I, oh like like this is the kind of energy with people you have to be super careful with because they're so desperate to lose you like this is sabotage birth control crazy in order to make sure that they come up with something legal that will make it inescapable for you to get out of a toxic relationship. But I do like that the Three of Swords in the reverse, this is a karmic contract break card because chances are you're ready to move on. You're ready to elevate it. You have been working on boundaries. Like there, I'm hearing it's a work in progress and being able to say goodbye to this energy is not supposed to be easy. And it's important to remember that when we are intermixed with somebody, whether if that's legally intermixed, energetically intermixed, um, that I'm hearing genetically intermixed, especially say if a child is involved here. Where is it that you can start separating just the energy? the habit the loop the thing that you are subconsciously feeding because you keep trying to find solutions you this is a very active emperor but your problem is that you're not supposed to keep trying to actively fix something you're trying to actively fix something that's broken like you know i've talked about my lot lemon of a car where i had my chevrolet aveo and that thing broke like once every three months for the five years that i had it that thing was a piece of shit when it came off the lot it was poorly manufactured from day one and i tolerated it why because i didn't have much other money and i prefer to drive around but your circumstances have changed and this boredom this nothing this unknown is something that until you're ready to embrace the unknown, to embrace boredom, to embrace the calm, you're accidentally feeding this person's um, insatiable personality because they'll just come back to you, woo you back in, they'll buy all the gifts, they'll whisper in your ear, they'll fill you up and they know exactly how it is you like to be touched. It's using false sense of spirituality and um, 
karmic romance tactics to continue to lure you in. This is that past life energy of getting over, um, oh, why am I suddenly blanking on the term? <laughs> That is so funny. Like, I totally have lost, like, you know, it's like the Victorian style um, love romances where love had nothing to do with actual heart chakra sensation. It had everything to do with feeling fire in the belly. And that was what love felt like in that particular era, this fiery charge, passionate energy. That's the reason why the Victorian era, first of all, had a lot of sexually transmitted diseases. And then the, you know, also was followed with a heavily sexually repressed era. Like there's something in this particular collective of um, people who might be identifying with this particular karmic energy where this is someone that you probably fell in love with, like, you know, probably had an affair with in a past life. And especially if it was during that, the the Victorian, you know, romance era, like the reason why everything was followed up with heavy sexual repression is because so many people got caught up in so many problems that in order to get out of everybody else's drama, monogamy was the only way that people could solve their problems. There's some kind of middle ground energy that you're being asked to address. This isn't about just making everybody monogamous so we get out of each other's energies. They tried that, it didn't work, and now we're working with the consequences of that solution to our ancestors' patterns. But you are in this opportunity you need to start feeling okay that you don't need to give into other people's energies. If you do have legal ties, that there's a way you can do this thoughtfully and dispassionately so that you can maintain your own boundaries. This person has been siphoning off of you. This person, this situation is a succubus and your very presence is actually feeding it. You just need to show up. You just need to look at your phone and you can feel the, like, I feel your energy draining. Like if I saw this as my cell phone and I saw a message from this person, it's like, oh. like there's this instant, like, pull back and your brain shuts down that you don't want to focus on the actual problem and then you're left wondering well am i worthy i keep giving to this and nobody seems to appreciate what i'm doling out as you are able to work through 2222 on the clock work out through these soulmate contracts being able to resolve your own karmic habits recognizing that you know, in the past, you were told that doing nothing was death and recognizing that you can actually sit there and you can be hot as fuck and you can be completely content with allowing things to play out, allow the strategy to play out and it, not ignore the family issues, but just acknowledge that, you know, family members just didn't understand what was going on. You know, parents were just trying their best. You know, Jesus even said, honor thy mother and thy father. It didn't mean you need to like them. They tried their best and you're able to start taking more um, autonomy of your life and your relationships. How are you going to feel at the end of all of this? <laughs> Pay attention to the red flags. Ask your body. Mm. I, I, I was mentioning in the main reading, like, what are the sensations in your body that you feel? When you're lear like learning about someone brand new, having a difficult conversation, allowing that heart chakra, especially the higher heart chakra, which is your, you know, internet radio to, to the universe, uh, get releasing some of those blockages. Cause there's a piece of me like, uh, uh, <clears throat> your body is psychic and you have been taught to ignore your physical signals to let you know when there are red flags, to let you know when there is a problem, to let you know when somebody's not safe, to let you know that someone has a karmic tie. And even if they seem very nice and well-intended, you know that they're going to still drag you into it, whether if it is actively or um, subconsciously you are going to be developing a lovely relationship with your body. And especially if you were somebody that you felt disconnected, maybe even ashamed of your own body in the past, you're going to be feeling so much better about, you know, I'm getting a little of this, rawr, but also acknowledging, because remember earlier I was saying like, I suddenly got really hesitant at the idea of reaching down to the cards. That's that PTSD reaction that you're being asked to continually look at when you go into something and you feel like, Kunk, like, 
acknowledge it. If you can deal with it in the moment, even just something as simple as, you know, acknowledging it, you know, saying to yourself or out loud, I mean, like, what was that? Like, stand over there, like giving it orders. That's what, you know, Emperor Energy can do in his 5D reality. It's like, you stand over there. Taking some semblance of command, and you can have a little fun with it, make it into your own scene. This is your 5D, right? But being able to acknowledge it, say, what you just said, did, or made me feel is not useful. You are dismissed. This is you coming into your own masculine energy and feeling good that you can autonomously make decisions and because you are no longer tied to um, a karmic whim that, you know, just because they know how to, you know, kiss you and touch you and make you feel and rope you back in, like, sure, it feels good, but in some ways having healthy resistance and healthy boundaries because they will try it again. They will try all the old tricks and ticks in order to try and get back in there. But because you're feeling good in your own body, you're willing to listen to your body first. It's helping you point out all of the red flags. I love it. This is the card that came out at the beginning of the reading today with the air nomads. You are jumping into a fresh way of thinking. Your spiritual journey up until this point has been about releasing yourself from karmic contracts. The awakening is the card of judgment. You've woken up to a very different way of going about your relationships and you've started to make yourself that priority. From this day on, as you continue to clear out those karmic habits, you're going to start developing that beautiful relationship to your body, your mind, and your soul. And you're going to feel so confident to just rest in divine's arms as they carry you in to the next phase of your life where you don't have to worry about people impeding on your boundaries. You don't have to worry about other people's opinions or their tactics to rope you back in. You get to be the magician of your own reality and you will be able to feel confident about receiving and rejecting future love offers. I'm just saying, Oof. I think that's the message. Well, whoever you are, damn, I really hope that this helped. Well, thanks again for sticking around. Again, if you like my style, I'd really appreciate it. Like, share, and if you subscribe, it'd be so much easier for me to pick up on your energies. And, you know, if this didn't resonate with you, I sincerely hope you were entertained. You are welcome to go to the search bar up here and, you know, you can, you know, pick out, you know, you know, so some video that tells you about, you know, red flags of narcissists or, you know, whatever it is you're technically researching. Good luck, everybody. Bye.